The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. They had no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. As Indy's offense takes the field for the first time, we take a look at Matt Ryan, top 10 all-time in passing yards, playing his first career season outside of Atlanta. And when you start with listing a guy's accomplishments like Matt Ryan's all these years in the league, near the top of the league in completions and percentage, touchdowns each and every year, has won an MVP, taking his team to the Super Bowl. You're talking about a guy who might be finished, but he still has gas left in the tank. Big right arm, great leader, the face of his franchise. Up past the 25 to the 26, a gain of five. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. Now it's Ryan. Now that's into the hands of Mo Alley Cox, the tight end. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. Only two yards, and it'll be a punt on their opening possession. They're going on fourth down. It's Ryan. And a throw for Pittman is intercepted. It's Devin Bush, the linebacker, who picks it. And the Steelers are going to take possession of the football. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. On first and 10, it's Pickett. Harris has it over the middle. And he's going to get this down near the 25. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way. And really, we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 31. Credit the sack to the Oregon Duck to Forrest Buckner. A good field position to start the drive, but under the gun now here on third and eight. Pick it. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Nice third down conversion and even 20 yards. Now a first and 10 at the 11. To the air on first down with Pickett. Setting up the screen, Harris. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. But despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. Oh, jumping early from his tight end spot. Maybe trying to get a jump start on that route. Yeah, I think you're exactly right about that. And oftentimes when you see that, that means the play call was supposed to come in his direction, and he was eager to go catch a pass. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. And yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. And his kick is right there. It's good. And the Steelers will jump out to a three-zip lead. A lot of energy in this building tonight, but the opening drive produces three, maybe quiets them just a bit, at least momentarily. Just a little, right? That's all you're asking for, right? Things just getting started. You know they haven't taken the momentum totally here, but at the same time, they like what they've done here in the early going. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Colts come to the line, ready to start their next drive. For the first time out, they had the interception. That stopped their drive three points the other way, so now they work from behind. They do, but he's got to walk out on the field like he's working from ahead. All right, He's got to walk out like, hey, I just threw a touchdown pass because all eyes on his team are on him. They gain their confidence from the way he reacts, his demeanor, and how he plays. He's got to show that he has confidence in himself. Let's give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner route. On third down, Ryan. He's going to sling this deep downfield. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. 
Picked up by Minka Fitzpatrick. And the Steelers are going to take possession of the football. First and ten, here's Pickett. Complete, it's Johnson. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Throwing again on second and 10. Pick it. It's brought in by Harris. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. Harris running straight ahead. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. Working out of the gun, it's Pickett. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and ten. Looking to throw, Pickett. Forced out to his left. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers! Kenny Pickett, a 12-yard touchdown run as his guys are able to extend their lead. Extra point splits the uprights, and the lead grows to 10-0. So the drive there took six plays, and it was finished off by Kenny Pickett taking it in himself. Fields it right around the goal line. And they'll get him down inside the 30 to 27. Matt Ryan and the Colts heading back out on offense. And he's been loose with the football early. Interceptions on the first couple of drives. As they start again here, we'll see if he can do better. First and 10. That throw right side is complete here on the first play of the drive. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. The big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. Now Ryan. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They need to make up some ground, and they did. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Up the middle, here's Taylor. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. But you're down early, how do you get back in the game, maybe establish the run? I think they're trying to do that. I'm with you on that one, and what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football, let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. The carry here for the big tight end. Yeah, this is only going to be a gain of two. He needed three. It's fourth and one. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. It'll be a 47-yard attempt from the left hash. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. 
So, Charles, they are on the board after that kick. So, three drives, three points. Obviously not the start that you were hoping for, but they're able to erase that zero off the scoreboard. Yeah, I guess what you're saying is a point of drive is not what offenses are striving for by any stretch. They're happy they've got three now. They hope that that unlocks their offense for bigger points down the road. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Pick it on third and one. Quick completion here to Johnson. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. On the give, this is Harris. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Here's Pickett. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. Grover Stewart getting in there for the sack. Pickett and the Steelers in need of a big play here. Third and long after the sack. Back to throw here. Looking for Johnson, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Kenny Moore. And the Colts are going to take possession of the football. Third and long that time. He was trying to make something happen, but a little too risky. Well, the field tilted on him. And what I mean by that is what you said. Third and long. Got to push it downfield to try and pick up the first down. Defensive backs live for this situation. And they took advantage of the young man right there. And the drive starts with a completion left side. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop, you keep throwing it. Occasionally, you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. On third and short, going with their tight end. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Ryan. They're connecting here with Pittman on the out route. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. Well, that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. And a short pick up there down to about the nine. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. On third down, here's Taylor. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. As the offense comes out here, Charles, uh, maybe perhaps a bit more of a focus on the run game for this drive after tossing an interception on the previous one? I think that's a good way to look at it and a good way to think about it, but maybe they get to it in a little bit different 
way because after you throw an interception, you want to make sure you keep your quarterback's confidence high. So maybe give him a couple easy throws that he can complete and then get to the running game and try and get things settled down. Yeah, and still in the first half here, a long way to go. From the 27, Pickett flushed out right. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. And wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. Back to throw, Pickett. And the catch made by Johnson. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. They run the play fake. Here's Pickett. Eluding the pressure right. He gets it complete to Harris. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. A lot of effort there for just a three-yard gain. And now second down. They'll try the right side with Harris. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. And that is incomplete. And based on my math, They've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. Rodgers on the return. So a good punt, but a solid 12-yard return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. On second down, it's Taylor. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. Meanwhile, Ryan's throw caught by Pierce. And they're going to get this up to midfield. First and 10, Taylor now. Miles Jack there to make the tackle. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. 61 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. From the red zone now, here's Ryan on first down. He'll drop this underneath the Moss. And they're going to be set up now with the ball at the 13-yard line. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. 
on the handoff. This is Taylor. And they're able to stop him short. On third and six, they'll only pick up four. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation, and I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed, but the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. And he's able to pick up the first before he's brought down inside the five at the four. A solid pickup of five and a very solid fourth down conversion and defensively pure frustration. Play action, Ryan. To the right side and into the hands of the tight end, Branson. Three yards is the gain that time, second and goal. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that. And he takes it in for a Colts score. Kylan Granson punching it in from a yard away. And the Colts have taken the lead. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. Sims going to go ahead and hold on to this one, and they'll start at the 25. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. Pick it back to throw. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. Sacked by Yannick Ngakwe, the former Maryland Terp. These sacks now, they're starting to pile up, Charles. And that front seven defensively, they've had their way with this offensive line. And I think at this stage, we have to start thinking about under pressure, and they got to him again. Dio Odangbo providing a little deja vu. Back-to-back -back sacks, and now they're staring at a fourth and long. Here's Presley Harvin now. Now a fair catch is called for and taken a few yards across midfield. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Here comes Jonathan Taylor and his teammates. And it may just be the second quarter, but he's in his zone well on his way to eclipsing that 100-yard mark. And when a back has a game, as we're witnessing right now, his name's going to be in the books, but it's really a collective deal, isn't it? Because that the means line. he's getting plenty of blocking, a lot of help from his teammates, but he's making the most of it. Yeah, he's made the most of it to this point. Now Ryan on first down. And that's caught left side by Mo Ali Cox. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. Second down and three. Now a handoff, Taylor with it. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. 73 yards rushing here for Taylor. He's got a first down. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, partner, than to understand that if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because he is just shredding them at this point. And let's face it, coming into the game, they knew he would be the focal point of their attack. This is going to take an 11-man unit on the defensive side to start making plays. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. And Brandon, as you know, sometimes it's a lot tougher to run with these tight ends nowadays in the NFL. They're just bigger wide receivers. He lined up on the left side of the formation, ran a drag route across the field, and tried to work his way open. He was able to make the catch, but the defenders were there. Couldn't do a whole lot with it afterwards. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? 
Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Just picking up yardage in bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. They'll run here with Taylor. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. His carries tonight, they're getting up there, so maybe one of those every now and then is understandable. I would agree with that. Understandable every now and then. Sometimes you come back and you fake it to him and go play action. But other times you say, okay, they got him on that one. We'll come back to him in another carry. And he's brought down right at the five-yard line. Give him two on the play. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Now it's Ryan. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Mo Alley Cox, a five yard touchdown. And they are able to add on to their advantage. McLaughlin now to add the PAT. And his guys will take a 10 point lead. So that drive goes eight plays. And the result for the Colts. Here's a touchdown. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. Here's Steven Sims on the return from his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to spring together a nice drive and help themselves out. Yannick and Gakwe. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. But Charles, this has been something to watch so far. This is where you really feel for a quarterback. He's been running for his life in this first half. Brandon, that's five sacks already, so you know he's got to be saying, can we get some more guys in here to block, please? Because if we don't, we're going to need another quarterback. On third down, here's Harris. And he's going to be taken down right at about the 15-yard line. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. On fourth down, here's Presley Harvin on to punt. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a fair catch is taken here a step or two inside the 45-yard line. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and out will come the offense as they take over. Good starting field position for the Colts as they have it first and 10 at their own 44. And that's caught by the tight end, Branson. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. On the handoff, Taylor. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. 
Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. To throw is Ryan. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. It's Devin Bush, the linebacker, who picks it. And the Steelers are going to take possession as they've got it at the 42-yard line. Oh, and I saw the pressure coming at him. That just looked problematic. Hit him as he threw it. And the interception ensued. Let me pay homage to the man who stood in this spot before. He always talked about how much pressure is in the face of a guy and can he step into a throw. And when you can't do that, oftentimes interceptions result. On the move past the 40. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Pick it now on first down. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. Looking to throw again on second down. Pickett buying time to his left. He's got a man complete. And in for the Steelers touchdown. Steven Sims Jr. 32 yards. And the Steelers get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. That pass also evens the ledger for the rookie quarterback. Had the interception earlier, and now he gets the touchdown throw. The ideal touchdown interception ratio is what? Three to one for the best quarterbacks. But he's a rookie. Just getting back to even is a big deal. Increases the confidence his teammates have in him as he tries to become their leader. Here's the Steelers' kick team as they'll boot this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. And the Colts about to go on offense one final time in this first half. And they may just be content to take this three-point lead and head into the locker room. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we are at halftime here on a Monday night. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA. We now proceed to the start of the second half. Both these offenses have been in fine form. What will the second half bring us as we are underway in quarter three? And Sims says, let's bring it out to the 25. And the Steeler offense ready to get going here in this third quarter. Well, Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football, and now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together and come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. Pick it now from the gun here. He finds his man complete. That's Harris. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Pick it a look to throw it here. A throw left side caught by the tight end, Fryermuth. 
Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch and turn up field and pick up the first down. From the 38, Pickett finding room at midfield. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Now pick it. A quick throw knocked away. It's incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here in this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Off the play fake, here's Pickett. Here's Johnson with a reception. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 25-yard line. 23 yards the pick up there. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Pick it to throw on first down. He's got his tight end flyer Muth over the middle. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Tackle made by Zaire Franklin. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Looking to throw. Pick it. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Back to throw. Pickett. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Brandon Faison. And the Colts are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. So it was a drive that had real promise here to begin the third quarter, but ultimately derailed by the INT. And that was the position you wanted to be in, coming out to start this third quarter, get a nice drive going, looking for the end zone. Possibly got a little bit too greedy right there. There on the tackle, Mika Fitzpatrick. Here's a second and five now from the 25. Now Ryan. He'll drop this down to Taylor, and he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. That was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now it's Ryan. They'll find his man. That's Taylor again. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll make it second down. Not only did we just see back-to-back -back nice gains, but we're also seeing the confidence rise, not just for the guy who caught it, but the guy throwing it as well. And these kids, these back-to-back -back catches here out of the backfield, that could set something up downfield in a later sequence, right? A lot of the time, it starts to draw the defense closer to the line of scrimmage. So to your point, show this swing pass, show this check down. Maybe later on, you heave one deep when you catch him close to the spot. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They give him seven yards on the play, and they do pick up the conversion on third down. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Now a give to Taylor. And he'll get this one across midfield and down into Steeler territory. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Second down. 
Again, it's Taylor. And the stop here will come at the 38 yard line. 108 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Play action. It's Ryan. Out to the right and complete to Pittman. He'll be hit down at the 33. Five yards on the play. From the gun, it's Taylor. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. On first and 10, it's Ryan. Pass out left, caught by Woods. And he is going to lose yardage here. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. They go play action now. Ryan. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Throw left side taken in by Pittman. And he'll get this to the 23, but that'll be well short of what he needed. Short completion, just four yards. And that'll bring up fourth down. And his kick here is good. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. said in the locker room during the break must have worked. They forced the turnover. They didn't get the touchdown, Charles, but it does translate into three points to begin the second half. Exactly as they discussed in the locker room at halftime. Get some points to get things kick-started. Now start your half off with some momentum. Gives you something to build on for your next possession. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. As this offense takes the field again, CD, remember last drive, they were moving the football, but then they threw that costly interception, so we'll see if they can right the ship here on this drive. And doesn't that just sum up football? We see it all the time, don't we? The defense goes from losing to battle to making a huge play and stealing the momentum. So you know they're riding high right now, and they're ready to challenge this offense and that quarterback one more time. And we'll see if the offense is up for that challenge here as things start to get more interesting here in this second half. He was trying to clear the way, the big fullback. Instead, he gets a hole. And you don't see that very often on running plays from those guys because usually they're the lead blocker. Normally, when he gets caught, it's in a passing situation. Meanwhile, Pickett's throw complete there to Johnson. They get 14 yards, but not enough for the first down due to the previous penalty. Second and six, just inside the 30. Pickett. Steps away to his left. Again, it's Johnson. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. The picket finding Johnson there. First down, Steelers. And that's a nice throw right there. And I'll tell you what I've seen in recent times and actually watched a presentation in the offseason from a college offensive coordinator that showed about 10 different drills that he runs with his quarterbacks to show them how to get out of the pocket, how to get comfortable when they're doing so, and to make plays under that type of duress. That's an example of what we're seeing the colleges deliver to the NFL. To throw once more on second and 10, pick it. And he's gonna be intercepted for the third time thus far. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. And he will bring it back. An interception return for the Colts TD. Well, Charles, just some visibly frustrated players and coaches on that sideline right now because those halftime adjustments didn't work. The turnover problems continuing here in the second half. And the defense now 
sitting pretty comfortably as a result of that pick six. I think that's a great observation too, Brandon, because they did make adjustments at halftime. But how about this other group staying a step ahead despite whatever happened in that other locker room? No surprise they're leading, and it's appropriate that those defenders get to add to the lead directly. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Sims going to go ahead and hold on to this one, and they'll start at the 25. Pittsburgh offense making their way back out. Now they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offense? coordinator sometimes they just make a joke <laughs> all right guys you had your fun all right throw it out the window yeah let's get back on track here and sometimes that'll work just fine i guess it's time now to lean on that leadership and yeah, this will leave them a yard short nice pickup of nine yards on first down the last run got nine that leaves them with second and a yard They'll keep it on the ground. Harris again. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. Two yards the loss, and now they go from second and two to a tough third and four. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. Able to find his man. It's Pickens. And he goes out right around the 39. That one goes for eight yards. Now that's absolutely frustrating for a defender. Had a chance to get him on the ground before he got to the sideline, but what great vision and understanding where he is on the field as he headed for the marker and picked up the first down. On first and 10, it's Pickett. Dancing to his left, and he whips that one incomplete there. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you're definitely going to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Looking to throw. Pick it. Open man. That's the tight end, Fryermuth. And he gets this only to the 44-yard line. Not near enough to keep the drive alive. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to make it fourth down. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And they will take over first and 10. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Ball at the 23, second and eight. Here's Ryan. 
That one finds Pierce right side. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. And this is going to be a Colts first down as the tackle made it about the 43-yard line. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. They give to Taylor out of the gun. And only a couple there as he'll take this up to the 47. You'll forgive me if I get excited about what we just saw there, won't you? I know I'm supposed to be neutral here, but those were terrific plays back-to-back -back defensively. They know what the mission is. They've got to force a punt here if they want to have a chance to win the game. They absolutely do. Steps one and two done. Now they need this third step. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 35. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 35-yard line. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. Late in the game, he's certainly doing everything in his power to buy time for his guys to make a play, but in this case, he's surrounded, and all he has room to do is to get back to the line of scrimmage. Now left side, a completion to his tight end, and he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. 134 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. That's complete to Pierce. And they're going to get this down to about the 17-yard line here. Now a second down and six. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? Just <laughs> give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. They give it off here to the tight end. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Kylan Granson, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Colts have put this one to bed here in the fourth quarter. And now the Colts are going to keep the offense on the field as they'll go for two here. They'll let Taylor try and run. And he's going to go down right at the line of scrimmage. The defense left him with nowhere to go, and the try for two is denied. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. And Sims says, let's bring it out to the 25. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And, Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but 
the self-inflicted wounds. They've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're yeah, absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. To throw again on second down. Pickett, and we're turning right back to Boykin. And they're going to get this up to midfield. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked off by Julian Blackman. And the Colts are going to take possession of the football. Boy, you just kind of feel for him right now. Four interceptions, and you can almost see through his face mask. There's a lot going on in between the ears. There certainly is, and probably way too much, because now he's probably doubting himself a little bit, wondering what adjustments he has to make. But here's what he needs to do. Get through this game. Go to the press conference. Meet it head on and show your teammates you're ready to shoulder what happened today, and you'll be ready for the next game. And if he can do that as a rookie, that's a great sign of maturity. Now a throw here, hauled in. And they'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. So first and 10 now from the 30. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And some room to run now. And a good-looking run there as he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18-yard line. 12 more yards there and another first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. They're going to run this with a tight end. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. That play gets them six yards and sets them up with a first and goal. They go play action with Ryan. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. One thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air, and I'm not sure that he didn't, but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. Taylor will get about halfway there as he takes this from the four down to the two. Third and goal from the two, and they're going with a jumbo set offensively. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts. That's going to leave them with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. Stonewalled on second down. Now let's see what they can do on third and goal from the two. Off the play fake. Here's Ryan. And he's got his target. It's caught for a Colts touchdown. Mo Alley Cox. A feast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. As his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. McLaughlin for the extra point. And that will bump the lead up to 26. So that drive in total eight plays. And it culminates in an Indianapolis touchdown. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. Sims going to go ahead and hold on to this one, and they'll start at the 25. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. 
Back to throw. Pick it. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. Some boos coming down right now from this home crowd after that call. Yeah, and that was because of the pass interference call, but for a second there, I thought maybe they'd gotten a look at my uh, appearance as Othello in the high school play. <laughs> you, you were Othello? Not a good one, let me tell you. Yeah, boy, another ill-advised throw there as that will wind up incomplete. Pickett looking to throw on second down. Flush to his right. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Pick it right back to the air again. He's going to take another shot here. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Pick it, fourth down, desperation time. Crossing route catch made by Johnson. And he is going to have the Steelers first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. Escaping the pressure right. It's brought in by Harris. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Being chased out left. And this is caught. Well, they get one back. Picking up the late touchdown here, but still down big. So on this drive, the rookie leads him into the end zone, Charles, and that helps cancel out the points that were created on the previous drive when he threw the interception. Yeah, let's give some credit to this rookie because instead of hanging his head after his mistake leads to a touchdown, he comes back out and he's firing and made up for it right there. A well-executed series that helps reestablish some confidence. ...to run this offense. And they'll let that one go as it skips through the back of the end zone for a touchback. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Well, they've got to be feeling very comfortable and confident here with this lead in the football here in the fourth quarter, Charles. And I don't think that they need to score again, but it seems like this offense is just getting better as the game goes on. They've scored on their last two drives. Certainly feels like a chance for them to continue to have some fun out there, doesn't it? Game's already decided, as you noted. So they can continue to play loose, break out some other concepts, maybe run a few trick plays, get other people involved. Heck, even go deep on one of these first snaps just because they can. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and 10. Brian wants to throw it. Pressure comes, and the Steelers take him down. And now they're in the hurry up. Throwing on second and long. Ryan out of his hands quickly to Pittman. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. And a timeout coming in. This will be their final one with 10 seconds remaining. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. This will be from 56 yards out. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. And that will extend their lead even further. Well, ultimately, not really sure that they're going to need those three points, but they'll take the three and they pad that lead. Yeah, this one's already wrapped up, but you and I both know if you're an offensive coordinator, you never let up on the gas unless the head coach tells you to do so. And maybe you've actually clicked him off in your headset so you can keep calling plays and trying to add to this lead. And they've got it up past the 35, so pretty good starting field position. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. So this is just an exercise in futility. Do you, do you even bother running a play here offensively? I wouldn't because now is not going to erase what's happened during the game. 
So after it's over, you're going to go to the film, find out where the game was really lost. But this is not a situation now where you're going to make up for anything. We'll see what they do here. And as this defense walks off the field, they can do so with their heads held high. What a performance well, by, by the offense, too. I mean, really, Charles, just complete domination on both sides of the football here in this one. Certainly was, and I think both sides compete against each other all the time. You go to each other in practice, obviously your training camps, your offseason. But on game day, you both want to show your best. And I think that's what we saw 